I'm Deacon Frederick Bartels. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Ignatius of Antioch, this great Christian martyr. Who was this man? St. Ignatius was the Bishop of Antioch. He succeeded St. Peter there, not as the Bishop of Rome, not as a Pope, but as the Bishop of Antioch. He lived in the latter part of the first century and was martyred in Rome in the year 110 AD. He was an apostolic father, a church father, who through his writing communicated the belief of the church to future generations, to people like us. St. Ignatius was known among his followers as the God-inspired, certainly a man of great and deep faith. After he was captured by the Romans and being led in chains to Rome, he wrote seven letters to the churches in which he urged the faithful to not interfere with his upcoming martyrdom. He saw his martyrdom as the mark of a true disciple and as his path to God and to eternal union with Christ. I'd like to read to you a short excerpt from his letter to the Romans. I'm corresponding with all the churches and bidding them all realize that I am voluntarily dying for God, if that is you do not interfere. I plead with you, do not do me an unreasonable kindness. Let me be fodder for wild beasts. That is how I can get to God. I am God's wheat, and I am being ground by the teeth of wild beasts to make a pure loaf for Christ. Notice the Eucharistic overtones here. Christ, the Eucharist, Christ is the bread that came down from heaven. The bread he gives is his Eucharist, is his flesh and blood. And he gives this, gives himself for the life of the world. Jesus said in John chapter 6, My flesh is real food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life and I will raise them on the last day. Those who do not eat my flesh and drink my blood have no life in them. Ignatius of Antioch obviously had a very deep love for the Eucharist. Why? Because the Eucharist is Christ himself present sacramentally under the signs of bread and wine. Continuing with St. Ignatius, I would rather that you fawn on the beast so that they may be my tomb and no scrap of my body be left. Thus, when I have fallen asleep, I shall be a burden to no one. Then I shall be a real disciple of Jesus Christ when the world sees my body no more. Pray Christ for me that by these means I may become God's sacrifice. So again, St. Ignatius sees the mark of true Christian discipleship as martyrdom. And the wild beasts in the Roman amphitheater are his path to God. Continuing with St. Ignatius, What a thrill I shall have from the wild beasts that are ready for me. I hope they will make short work of me. I shall coax them on to eat me up at once and not to hold off as sometimes happens through fear. And if they are reluctant, I shall force them to it. Forgive me, I know what is good for me. Now is the moment I am beginning to be a disciple. May nothing seen or unseen begrudge me making my way to Jesus Christ. Come fire, cross, battling with wild beasts, wrenching of bones, mangling of limbs, crushing of my whole body, cruel tortures of the devil, only let me get to Jesus Christ. What a beautiful witness. In this letter, the heart of the martyr is unveiled. This deep love for Christ and this willingness to give one's life for Christ who gave his life for us. The Christian life is very much about martyrdom. We might not have to be literally killed as a martyr, but we have to be willing to die to self. We have to let go of our own ideas and wants, our own selfish desires, and put Christ in charge of our life. We have to order our lives to Christ to such an extent that if persecution arrives and if martyrdom and shedding of blood is required, we will willingly do so. 
St. Ignatius wrote in his letters about a number of other things. He wrote about the Trinity in an elemental way, an undeveloped way. In other words, he didn't have a fully developed theology on the Trinity. That would come later in the church. He also wrote about how Jesus is God. He mentions this over and over again, that Christ is God. He's not simply a man. He's not simply a prophet. Christ is God in the flesh. And in his writings, he also emphasizes the unity of the church, the hierarchy of the church, the bishops, the priests, and the deacons, and he uses the word Catholic. And so let me leave you with one last excerpt from one of his letters about this unity and authority found in the Catholic Church. St. Ignatius writes, You must all follow the bishop as Jesus Christ follows the Father and the presbytery as you would the apostles. Reverence the deacons as you would the command of God. Let no one do anything of concern to the church without the bishop. Wherever the bishop appears, let the people be there. Just as wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church. It is telling and interesting that St. Ignatius of Antioch uses the word Catholic at Antioch. This is the very same place as the Acts of the Apostles tell us that the first followers of Christ were called Christians. God bless you.